the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill. His mind alert. A ready smile. Unswerving. Loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. A ranger's life is jam-packed with danger. And the dangers may come at him one at a time or in bunches like bananas. Dangerous animals and reptiles, floods, storms, forest fire, and I could make the list much longer... But there's one danger that turns a ranger's blood to chilled water. And that's the sound... Now you've heard the sound. Snow avalanche. Hundreds and thousands of tons of snow catapulting down the slope of a mountain, smashing, crushing, and covering everything in its path. There's little chance for escape. You can't swim it. Crawl under or over it, or run from it. Henry and I have been on ski patrol up in the Big Six country. The Big Six are mountains on top of mountains, and only the most experienced skiers can attempt the Big Six. Big Six Lodge is located on a sort of giant plateau, so as to attract all skiers of varying experience. Skiing can be done on the gentler slopes below the lodge, and also from the big six and their dangerously fast slopes. Our job, keep the lodge and the big six country safe from snow slides. Find the baby avalanches and kill them. Well, there's another baby avalanche that won't grow up to be a big and mean granddaddy killer snow slide. You said it, pal. If we didn't blow up this snow collecting point, it would build and build. Till someday some poor skier would blow his nose too hard and pow! Down the mountain this killer would roll. Boy, and how. Hey, you remember about five years ago, the one that pulverized Little Six Lodge and everybody in it? Yeah, I sure remember all right, pal. And so do you. We dug out at least a dozen bodies. That's why they built the reinforced concrete room under the Big Six Lodge, just in case. I don't think they'll ever have to use it now that we're scouting for the little fellows and blowing them down the mountain. I hope you're right. But we've had more snow than usual this winter, and you and I have been pretty busy lately, trying to keep up with the avalanche hatching department. <laughs> yeah, you said it. But it's fun. You know, this year gives me lots of skiing time, and I love it. I'll say, young fella, it's getting late. We better start heading for that lodge, pronto. Hey, I'll beat you to the lodge if you're not too tired for a race. Well, you young whippersnapper, I'll be down there having supper before you shift into high gear. Oh, yeah? Well, let's see you catch me. Ah, <laughs> here I come. Jenny, I wish you'd stop looking at the big six like a lovesick calf. Oh, Edith, don't be a child. I can and I will ski them. Oh, you're impossible. You've got to be the best to take the big six, and that's not all. There's avalanches. It can't be so tough. Look at those two come down the big six. Those are the rangers. Oh, Paul, I didn't hear you come up. Rangers? Well, what are they doing up there? Well, their job is to find where the snow is building up for potential avalanches and blow them up with explosives so they can't grow any bigger. Oh, look at them. They must be awfully good skiers. Well, they're among the top skiers in the area. They have to be to stay alive up there. Look at them ski. Oh, how wonderful. Well, I know who they are. Bill Jefferson and Henry Scott. 
Yes, Bill is the boss ranger and Henry is his right hand. Married? Jenny. No, they're single. Good looking? Oh, yes. Very handsome and very rugged. Hmm. Uh, don't waste your time, Jenny. They won't let you ski the big six. I'll say they won't. They're tough. <laughs> I've never had any trouble before getting my way with men. I'll ski the big six. Jenny, I'm warning you. Paul, you run your lodge, and I'll run the rangers. What happened, pal? You were so slow. <laughs> well, I let you win out of respect to your senior years. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, Henry. What's tickling Bill? <laughs> oh, he's laughing at his old age. You fellows didn't ski like old age. In fact, you had quite an audience. Come on, Paul. You didn't just stop by to tell us that. What's up? Who didn't check in and we've got to go and look for him? Well, there aren't any missing skiers, but there's liable to be. Huh? Are you a prophet? Well, this is what I know right now, not a prophecy. All right. Who's the trouble this time? Boy, you must read my mind. Uh, he or she or, or is it a thing? Well, offhand, I'd say it's a female thing. Her father neglected to do one thing when he raised her. He neglected the paddle. You said it, and I don't mean canoe paddle. Well, Paul, what's her name? Jenny. Jenny Bender. And she's very beautiful, I might add. You tell Miss Bender that avalanches kill very beautiful women just as quickly as anyone else. Great beauty doesn't stop a snow slide. Well, now that you've seen the two rangers, what do you think of them? Oh, they're the two most handsome and rugged men I've ever seen. Uh, Henry Scott seems awfully young, but, oh, that Bill Jefferson, dreamy. Just dreamy. And tough as nails for those who break the law or don't follow safety rules. Edie, dear child, don't you know rules and regulations were never made for a woman like me? Jenny, dear child, you're not a woman yet, and you're no older than I am, so don't pull that stuff on me. But, Edie, you think like a child. What's that stupid sign doing here? No skiers allowed on the Big Six until the ski patrol has cleared it of potential avalanche build-up locations. This order applies to all skiers, no exceptions. Bill Jefferson, Chief Ranger. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you young ladies can read. That sign applies especially to you, Jenny. Oh, pish tish, Paul. My father is a big supporter of your lodge, and I'll ski where I want and when I want. Uh, need I remind you that your father's parting words were for me to make sure you stayed out of trouble? Oh, he was just talking like a father. I don't pay any attention to him. Fathers can be so square sometimes. Jenny, how you talk? Well, it's the truth. Well, I wouldn't dare say that about my father. Perhaps, but uh, you think it. Well, I'm sure I thought that about my father, too, when I was in my late teens. That is, until something happened and I found out... Dear old dad wasn't a square after all, but a pretty smart fella. But I didn't play around with death. Oh, Paul, stop being so melodramatic. Jenny, I don't care what you say or think, but you'd better obey the ranger's orders and stay off the big six. Understand? Stay off the big six until the snow slide danger is over. And what will you do if I don't? Why, I'll be best man at your funeral. Hey, don't you guys ever rest or sleep or slow down like normal human beings? <laughs> Good morning, Paul. Oh, it is Paul, isn't it? Uh, I think so, pal. Uh, however, I think Paul has two eyes instead of only half of one eye. <laughs> half? His good eye isn't open more than a slit. You'd better watch where you're walking, Paul, or you'll run into something. Well, I'd get plenty of sleep if there weren't so many crazy people in the lodge. Do you guys realize it's only 5.30 in the morning? Man, that's late. You know, we've got to climb the big six on our own steam. None of this soft stuff like riding the ski toe for us. 
Oh, that's right. Say, have you fellas had breakfast? Sure. Cookie is a good friend of ours. Is it uh, bad up on the Big Six? I think so. We're changing our tactics today, Paul. Instead of spotting baby avalanches and blowing them right up then and there, we're going to try and survey the whole Big Six today. And tomorrow we'll go back and start the demolition. That way we might be able to open up part of the Big Six in just a few days. Say, how about Jenny Bender? What do you mean, how about her? You know the orders. I mean, after you open up the high slopes. Does she have the experience and common sense to ski the killer slopes? No, but she thinks she has. Now, the hospital is full of those kind of people. Wow, the place is crawling with baby avalanches. Hey, look at that one up there. Uh Uh-huh. Looks like it's in a good spot for a fast and large growth. Maybe we better climb up there and knock it down. If we do, we'll never finish our survey. I sure hate to leave it, even overnight. Maybe I can shout it down. Say, you just gave me an idea, pal. Rifle shot? Right. Now watch. Good shot. Yes, sir. Uh Uh-oh. That shot was too good. There's another one coming down behind us. Let's get out of here. Head for the lodge. Boy, that was a sleeper. You said it. Pull up. Man, that was a close squeak. And how? Now, there's a Class A example of how those killer avalanches work. Oh, and how? They wouldn't have found us until the spring thaw. Come on. Let's go back to the lodge. We lost too much ground to climb back up and finish the survey today. i glad to see you guys. We heard them. What happened? Well, Bill shot one down and another snuck up behind us. We heard them, so I grabbed the glasses just in time to see you two come racing down the gap like you were being chased. That was close. Yeah, you're right. Well, what's for supper? How can you guys be so nonchalant and relaxed after a narrow escape like that? We always say a miss is as good as a mile. Yeah, but... Oh, this is dangerous business, Paul. Sooner or later, we're bound to have a close one. Right. That's why it's so important to be spiritually and mentally ready to face death. Well, we're not afraid of dying. But on the other hand, Paul, the Lord doesn't want us to shortcut our lives by foolish action. This is risky business. We try to stay in top condition and be prepared for emergencies. We're not afraid to die. We got roast beef for dinner. the dream boat. What a hunk of man. Here's my chance. Jenny, don't. Not now. No, pish tish, child. If you're afraid, wait here and finish your dinner. Bill Jefferson? Mr. Jefferson, I don't like to be ignored when I talk to you. Bill Jefferson, it will do no good to hold your head down. I won't go away. Miss... Miss, whatever your name... Jenny Bender. Oh, Jenny Bender. So you're the one. Yes, I'm the Jenny Bender. Don't you have sense enough not to interrupt people when they're praying? Or don't you pray before you dine? Is that why you had your head down? That's old-fashioned. You know, old hat. Strictly for squares. And I'm a square, Miss Bender. I'm also a Christian. Henry and I pray before every meal. Yeah, and we also read our Bibles and go to church in Sunday school. Bill? I want to ski the big six. You know what happened up there today. Of course. And because you two are such expert skiers and such rugged men, you escaped. 
Doesn't that register in the common sense department of your brain? Yes. You two can teach me to ski the big six. And I'd really like you to teach me, Bill. How about starting tomorrow morning? Young lady, I'm a ranger, not a ski instructor. And what a ranger. What a man. My kind of man. <coughs> Miss Bender. Oh, call me Jenny. All my friends do. Miss Bender, the answer is no. Absolutely and flatly no. Now, will you please allow us to have dinner in peace and quiet? Well, I can take a hint. But I am going to ski the big six. With or without you. Jenny, stop acting like a spanked child. Oh, he makes me so furious. You finally met your match, didn't you? I told you he's tough. Well, I'll show him. Oh, stop. You're acting like a spoiled brat. You know you're not going to ski the big six, so why talk about I it? I am going to ski it. Are you crazy? Bill and Henry almost got it up there today. The only reason they didn't is because they're experts and they've had a lot of skiing experience. I have a lot of skiing experience, too. But not enough for up there. Even some of the best men skiers won't try it because it's too dangerous. Too many snow slides. I'm going to do it. Not really. You don't really mean it. I'm going to do it, even if it kills me. Oh, boy. Oh, this is a cat's meow. That fire sure feels good. Arms right down to me creaking old bag of bones. Mm-hmm. It sure is cozy, all right. I think I'm going to take a nap. Afterward, I'll settle down to some real sleep. Oh, me too. Likewise. Oh, let the winter winds blow. Let there be ice and snow. I don't care now. Oh, it's so comfortable. Edith, for the love of Mike, we go to bed early up here, you know. Skiers are supposed to get tired from all the fresh air and that sort of stuff. I'm sorry, Paul, but have you seen Jenny? No, I don't care if I ever do. Well, I'm worried. She hasn't come to bed and I can't find her anywhere. Hmm, that's too bad. Maybe she's making goo-goo eyes at Bill or on a manhunt. Oh, Paul, wake up. This could be serious. She said she's going to ski the big six. At night? Oh, go to bed, Edith. Paul, will you please wake up and pay attention? <sighs> What's the ironclad rule about skis? Oh, for Pete's sake. Let me get some sleep. All skis have to be in the rack, don't they? Of course. Well, why? So we can count noses. Now let me go to sleep, District Attorney. Jenny's skis aren't in the rack. Look... I counted all ski racks before dark, and all hands are safely tucked in. Now go away, will you? Paul, her skis aren't there. I just looked. Are you sure? Oh, man. I have two good eyes. Go see for yourself. Come on, and be quiet. Bill and Henry are sleeping in the lounge. They need their rest. Okay, but hurry. Wait till I grab a coat. Okay, come on, let's go. You're right, they're gone. Oh, I never thought she meant it. What'll we do? How about her ski clothes? She had them on late this afternoon, but I didn't think anything of it because she hardly ever changes until after dinner. Well, we better make sure she isn't around here somewhere. Let's get Bill and Henry to help. No, let the poor guys relax. If we can't find her, then there'll be plenty of time to get them. Well, how are we going to search for her? How far? Well, you go out this end of the lodge, and I'll go around the other end, and we'll meet in front. Now, be sure and look everywhere, but don't call out. Okay. Oh, that crazy kid. Rangers up at 5.30. Crazy women disappearing. Up early and to bed late. This is nuttier than a fruitcake factory. <laughs> Oh, 
I didn't find her. Neither did I. Are you sure you looked everywhere? Yes. What's that noise? What noise? Shh. Avalanche. No. It can't be. Jenny's out there. It's too late now. I'm going to sound the alarm and get everyone into the shelter. Come on. Paul, how close is it? It sounds far away, but... But is right. At a 150-mile-an-hour clip, it won't take long to get here. Come on, pal. We're the last ones. Let's get down in the shelter before it's too late. Boy, having a microphone on the outside so you can hear the slide coming sure is clever. But I don't think it's going to reach the lodge. Oh, that's good. Well, oh, it's dying off. Must be a mile short of the lodge, thank the Lord. All right, folks, it's safe to go back to bed now. Oh, Come on, upstairs now. Come on, everybody. It's all over. Thank the Lord for that. Jenny. Jenny, you fool. What's going on, Paul? Well, Jenny Bender's missing. What? Well, I thought you counted all the skis before dinner. She left the lodge after dark. Now, wait a minute. Maybe she didn't head for the big six. Oh, Bill, you know that's where she went. You know it was the one thing that possessed her. Well, we might as well get started looking for her. She's under the slide. I just know she is. Well, there's one way to find out. We'll go up and take a look. We don't know how much area this one covered. Good idea. Come on. Oh. Oh. oh, no. She's under it, all right. Another half mile, and we'd be under it, too. All right, pal. Let's suit up and get our skis on. Okay, Bill. She got the big six, all right. Right on top of her. Well, let's... Let's hold up a minute, huh? Yeah. Well, we've covered both sides of the slide. I'll say we did. Boy, it's cold up here tonight. Yeah, you said it. Jenny didn't have a prayer of a chance, Bill. I know she didn't, Bill. But we had to try. Uh, sure we did. I wouldn't sleep nights if we... if we hadn't. Tell me something. If I can, shoot. Well, why did a beautiful young woman like Jenny throw her life away like this? In Proverbs... 13, 24, it says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son. He that loveth him chasteneth him. Yeah, well, that makes a fellow stop and think. Jenny never learned to take instruction. Nor has she received the benefits of constructive discipline. Well, have you got your wind back, pal? Yeah, her money when you are. All right, let's head back to the lodge. I have to call Jenny's father and tell him the tragic news. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? What's the matter? You see something move? No, but there's a black speck down there below us. It looks like a, a small piece of charred wood sticking out of the snow. Whereabouts? Follow my point. You see it? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, you're right. It does look like charred... Of course. It's like charred wood because it's the tip of a chimney to a small cabin down there. Could she be in... It's a slim hope. A mighty slim one. But at least it's hope. Come on, let's go. Careful, pal. There could be air pockets under the snow around the building. Yeah, I'll watch it. 
Hey, there's the black speck we saw. It's the chimney top, all right. Let's clean away this snow. Yeah. I'll, I'll wipe this side off. Okay. Hey, this chimney is pretty big inside. That's what I was thinking. Hello. Anybody down there? Who, who is it? Who is it? Where are you? Oh, thank the Lord she's alive. Amen, pal. Haven't got any time to waste. Jenny, this is Bill Jefferson and Henry. Can you get in the fireplace? We're at the top of the chimney. Oh, Bill, I didn't think anyone would ever find me. Oh, how did you... Never mind that. Tie the end of this rope around and under your arms and we'll pull you up. Now, don't panic. Your life depends on it, and ours too. We don't know if there's more avalanche to come. Now hurry up. I, I, I'll try, but my hands are shaking so badly. You can do it. Now tie that rope. Right now. All right. I'm ready. Is it a stout knot? Yes. You're going to get full of soot, but you're coming up. Now close your eyes. All set. Now. Okay. Pull. That's it. A little more. Here she comes. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, you're wonderful. Henry, put her on my back. Jenny, you'll have to ride piggyback. All right. Uh, up you go. Oh, there. There we are. Oh, All right, I'm Henry. Set. Break trail for us. Head for the protection of those rock overhangs at the edge of the slide. And step on it. All right. Not another one? Come on, Bill. It's only a few more steps. I'll make it. Get against the wall. Flat. The chimney's completely covered. I would have died. Jenny, you're alive. Thank God. Look at me. Look what a mess I am, thanks to you, Bill Jefferson. My hair is black. My ski clothes, they're, look at them. They're all covered with soot. Oh, I'm just a horrible mess. Well, stop staring at me and leave me alone. Well, I'll be a busted ski. She didn't even thank you fellas for saving her life. Of all the... Paul, skip it. It's all right. Huh? It is? Yes. She's partially in shock, but mostly embarrassed. You see, this is her first taste of discipline. And uh, it hit her like an avalanche. Well, see you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bill! Ranger Bill is a Moody Radio Network production.